Hello everyone, my name is Julia. I am a certified Montessori teacher and I'm also a mom of a nearly 22 month old named Isaac and a stepmom to a nine year old named Asher. It is spring break and spring cleaning and today you're gonna to be joining me for a whole bunch of DIY crafting and assembly types of activities to put on your shelf. If you are new here, I'd love for you to consider subscribing and to click that notification bell so you're alerted whenever I make a new video. Most of these activities involve things that I've collected from thrift shops and dollar stores and consignment stores that I've had as loose parts and I really just want to consolidate them. So this first one is a textural matching board with some old uh, wooden curtain rings and just a whole bunch of textured things. And also this bamboo sort of a serving board that I found in the dollar store. So first and foremost, I need to take off these screws that are in most of the ring rods. So I'm just going to do that. And once they're all done, I just laid them out here. I think I'm just gonna do six for now and see how that goes. So I'm just going to hot glue gun them to the board. You'll have to excuse my camera ship. I have no tripod. I'm holding the camera in one hand and doing this in the other hand. Uh, so forgive the camera angles occasionally, but just glue them in. I glued them in first before I decided which items I wanted to put in each of them. So here's what I've decided so far. Uh, thank you husband for coming and holding the camera also. So I have a googly eye, a piece of bright pink fabric with a flamingo pattern, a felt sun, some shiny reflective tape, and I'm just doing some hemp uh, string as a bit of textured and my very last one is some velcro so I just simply gluing whichever textures or colors I wanted on the matching rings. I chose to do a variety of colors and shapes and textures. You can, of course, coordinate this with anything your child is particularly interested in, whether it be insects or colors or shapes. There's some good freedom that you can have with this. This next activity is going to be a transferring and color matching activity, just using this small artist palette that I got from the dollar store a long time ago, as well as these colored plastic Easter eggs that I bought a couple months back, and they were kind of a fail. They really were not good quality, so I've been wondering how to use them, and I thought this would be an easy and simple thing to do. So all I'm gonna do is glue one half of the colored eggs on the artist's palette. Uh, as you can see, I only have five colors right now, which I'm okay with. I don't need to fill in that six space unless I really, really want to. I've also been keeping the colored lids off of, you know, those uh, bags that have the like squishy baby food in them or applesauce in them or whatnot. So I've collected a whole bunch of colors. I know that they're gonna have lots of uses. They already have, and they happened to work really well with the colors of Easter eggs that I had. So this was just a really simple but fun activity that I also set out for Isaac on his shelf. The next activity I decided to make was more of a musical activity. It's kind of a take on the Montessori sound boxes. So all I did was reuse the um, spice jars that I had gotten, which I had 
been previously using as smelling jars for Isaac, but now I'm just gonna turn them into sound jars. So I'm just gonna do two matching pairs for this first one. And I've just got some of these beads in one. This, These beads came from, I bought a massive bag of these from the thrift store, just knowing that they would come in use for various little parts or for transferring activities. And I'm just gonna cover all four of them with this black felt. Okay, so what I have in the other ones I should mention are just a couple of staples. And now for the control is to put matching stickers on the bottom so that I guess it can use this sticker matching as well as a form of self-correction. This next activity is just going to be some DIY uh, color matching wooden pots and people. I got these pots and these people shaped things from Michael's and I'm just using some non-toxic Crayola children's paints. I did actually go to Michael's to see if they had any more but they've been out for weeks. So I'm fine just doing the standard rainbow colors although feel free to adjust this to whatever colors or even patterns your child is interested in. You could paint these or get some project tape that is different animal skin or fur patterns and match with animals. There's lots of different ways that you can do this one. And while I had the paints out, I thought I would just do another color sorting and fine motor skill activity. This one's using these little wooden planks from the dollar store and more uh, ring rods that I collected. Those ring rods have been super useful. I've been using them for dowels and stacking activities and this is just the next thing. Also a good way to use those little tiny uh, popsicle, colored popsicle sticks. So I started painting the outside of each of these. Finish on these rings was a little bit different. So I'm gonna paint one layer and see how it dries. And I might have to paint a second layer. So if I do, I'll probably have to come back in a couple hours just to see how that works. So this is what it looks like after the first layer has dried. I think I'm going to put on a second layer just to try and touch it up a little bit. If you wanna be super finicky, you could probably put tape or something around to make sure your lines are fine. But honestly, I don't need things to look exactly 100% absolutely perfect, just as long as they are pretty and the general idea is there. I think that's all I'm going to do for today. I do have a whole bunch more, so stay tuned for a part two and I will see you shortly. What color are you gonna choose next? Yellow. You're gonna find a yellow one? Why is the yellow one? Oh, what color is that? Yellow. 